Hi, my name is Mark and I teach economics. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about the diamond water paradox. Now, what is this? It was discussed by people like Plato, Copernicus. And what it is, is connected to value. It, how economists determine value and ultimately price. The classical economists said, perhaps value is associated with usefulness or utility. Now my shovel is the most useful thing I own. I created this amazing garden with it and only with this shovel. So this must be very valuable and worth a lot of money. Is it? No. Oh, okay. So now maybe value is not connected to utility or usefulness. Maybe it's connected to the amount of labor put into an object. That is what Karl Marx believed. Look at that beautiful garden back there, or let's say that plant. I don't know if you can see it, but that pepper plant was the fruit of my labor and the sweat of my toil and sweat of my brow. So it must be worth like a million dollars. Is it? No. Okay. So if usefulness and labor are not the source or ultimate rooting of value, I wonder what is. Adam Smith talked about the diamond water paradox, and he talked about how water is essential for life. It's great utility, but it's not of much value, where diamonds were basically useless. There was speculation among the economists that perhaps the cost of extracting or the labor of the diamond is what made it useful. In fact, the classical economists used saffron as the herb as an example. So let's talk about this. We have a diamond, let's say this is a diamond, it's actually a quartz, but this is a diamond, and we have water. Oh no, oh no, oh, oh, I'm good now, I'm good now. Okay, I'm good now. Oh no, a diamond, okay, <laughs> diamonds, okay. Diamonds and water. Thank you for my fair-haired assistant. Water certainly is essential for life but it's infinitely <laughs> less expensive because you can go to the store and pick up oodles of water or you can just collect rainwater if you're an off-the-grid hipster in bottles. Where diamonds, people will pay 20,000 or more for a diamond like this. You saw the Titanic. So where and how can this be solved? It wasn't until Leon Wallace, Carl Menger, and Jevons, Stanley, Marshall Stanley Jevons, the classical economist known as marginalists, explained this in terms of subjectivity. They actually use the term marginal utility, but for this video, we're just gonna say value is determined subjectively. Value is whatever you attribute, whatever you think this is worth. For example, if a Martian came or aliens came from Alpha Centauri, which is 4.3 light years away, and we said, look guys, this is valuable, they would look at me like, uh, it's a rock. It is not just the rarity, it's that what value I attribute to it, because to them it's just a rock. And the funny thing is, in the 1970s there was something called a pet rock. Everybody would pay oodles of money for this pet rock because that's what people thought was valuable. So you see, the supply and demand is the formalization of something called the theory of marginal utility and scarcity. But in the simplest terms, the diamond water paradox can be explained, and Adam Smith and Ricardo, they were both people who worked on this problem, they couldn't exactly put their finger on it. It wasn't until this marginal revolution that they said value is subjective, and that is why we think this is valuable, and water, mm, it is useful, but today it's not valuable. If I was in the desert, and I would trade a bag of diamonds for a glass of water, because that's how the subjectivity comes into play. So that's the diamond water paradox explained. Value is not connected with usefulness. Value is not connected with cost or labor, but value is connected with subjectivity of whatever I think is worth. Thank you very much.